Okay, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Haywood County Board of Commissioners for Monday, May 16th, 2022. Our first order of business will be our Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll have uh, our Pastor Josh Fraser come forward for invocation. So if everyone would please stand for the pledge. Let's pray. God in heaven, we thank you for another beautiful day. We can come together for this meeting, for the time that's put in, the preparation for this. We thank you for the different things that will be happening happening tonight, especially the awards for um, just good success in so many areas. We do thank you for all of our emergency personnel and people who help not only our county, but our local cities and and our even greater the state and federal governments. We thank you for all those who put so much on the line to keep us safe in so many different ways. We thank you for those who are here that make decisions. We pray for wisdom and guidance and all that they do. We ask that you would just help as the big decisions are made and even small ones. We pray that everything that would happen would be honoring and glorifying. We pray that uh, as, as we seek to create an atmosphere and a place, a culture that people can live in and live in peace and harmony. We pray that it would continue and that people would just want to be here in a greater sense and that people would understand and see how great it is to live in this beautiful area. We again thank you for all the blessings that you give to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Josh. Our next order of business is public hearing, and I have a call for a public hearing on Monday, June 6, 2022, at 9 a.m. We right? okay. For approval to rename the current road of Amity Lane in Waynesville, North Carolina 28786, to Windmill Lane. This is to comply with the address and road naming ordinance, Chapter 90.27, Section C, E911. And we have our address coordinator, Daniel Wiemhoff, here. See you. Did you want to say anything about that, Daniel? <laughs> That's good. Okay. So, do I need a, a motion for that, Tracy? Okay. So, can I have a motion for that? Well, can I? Can we? Um, can we have the hearing on Monday morning if we change those rules? Yeah. Okay. So we can, I mean, used to we could only have hearings in the evenings. Evening. Yeah, we can okay. change that. And have the the people involved in that road, have they been notified the, of the name Windmill Lane? Hey, come on up, Dan. Come up to the podium, if you would. I'm not aware. I have not been in contact with the people on Amity Lane. On Amity Lane? Yeah. I come? was informed that Windmill Lane was going to be the new name. So, you were, I was I was informed that Windmill Lane was going to be the new name. So, that is, as far as I know, that's all I know. Okay. Okay. So, in order to do that, you got to have so many signatures. Yeah, this is a little different. We we have talked to the the current resident that was having issues receiving okay. packages but, uh, uh, yes, that's what before I'm... we brought this forward we, we talked with them about an appropriate road name and they've had more input than they did last time okay uh, good. so I, I think they're on board with the name all right. change all right okay okay thank, thank you daniel yep. sorry to make you do that i, I know <laughs> i know you didn't want to <laughs> get it under his belt there <laughs> okay can i have a motion that for the public hearing so moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, we'll have that public hearing at our next meeting. Okay, next order of business is our public comment session. I do not have anyone that has signed up to speak. Would anyone like to address the board? Seeing no one, I'll close the public comment session. We will go to constituent concerns. And I would like to, under constituent concerns, I would like to uh, recognize the North Carolina Association of, well, let me just say that the North Carolina Association of Public Safety Officials have awarded Haywood County Sheriff's Office, the Communications Division, 
the 2022 Communications Team of the Year Award during the annual conference in Wilmington, North Carolina on May 4th, 2022. And I want to recognize our Sheriff uh, Christopher uh, to speak about the award. Welcome, welcome, Sheriff. And we're going to have... We got also Chanda Morgan. As this group comes and lines the front right here, uh, I just want to uh, begin by saying thank you for allowing us to recognize them this afternoon. Uh, this is just a, uh, this is about half of the group. The rest of those <laughs> folks are still there working, pushing buttons this <laughs> afternoon. Uh, as the sheriff of this county, it, it is truly an honor to get to work with people like this right here. These people uh, answer calls and they save people's lives on a daily basis. Um, and they're led by a uh, wonderful lady that, uh, that has this county uh, at, uh, at right here. And, and that's in her heart, Shanda Morgan. I'll tell you just a little bit about the, the <clears throat> center. Not only do they dispatch for the sheriff's office, they also dispatch for the town of Clyde, which, of course, the sheriff's office uh, handles their law enforcement business, and the town of Maggie Valley. They dispatch for 15 fire departments, two fire marshals, the entire Haywood County Emergency Medical Services team, the Haywood County Rescue Squad, and our search and rescue team. They also dispatch our deputies out at Lake Junaluska during for their security uh, time. Uh, they also dispatch animal control. They, uh, after hours and on the weekends, they dispatch Haywood County DSS after office hours. Junaluska Sanitation uh, uh, Division or uh, District after uh, office hours, and also the Maggie Valley Water Department, uh, to include probably some more that I have uh, not gotten written down. But uh, these guys and girls are 24-7. They're there whenever I get there in the morning. They're there whenever I leave at night, and uh, they are for the people of this county. And for them to win this award, you know, they, they give out one of these per year, and there's a 100 counties. So that tells you what kind of quality that you have working for you and for the rest of the citizens of our county. One of the things that I want to thank you all for, again, is the fact that you gave her the opportunity to hire more employees this past year. That has been a blessing to our, uh, to, to our uh, law enforcement fire officials, uh, as well as people needing to call 911 and getting somebody to answer the phone. Uh, very, very important. In 2015, 130,000 phone calls came into that office. 2021, 160,000 calls. Mm. Dispatch calls in 2015 was 44,508. This past year, 66,624 calls were actually dispatched. So that means that at least one person, and most of the time two, has been on the phone with someone before this thing gets dispatched. And uh, the, the, these folks do a tremendous job for us. And so I thought it very appropriate for us to bring them in and uh, honor them this afternoon for just a minute. And I want Shanda to uh, take just a minute uh, as well. Shanna, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just give you a brief, just a few words as far as the nomination. Basically, we were nominated because of the tropical storm. So, of course, everyone knows August 17th, trop tropical storm Fred made its way into Haywood County, bringing heavy rain. At 2.30 that afternoon, we received more than 14 inches of rain. Eight of the 14 inches fell in two to three hours at the headwaters of the Pigeon River, which began the flooding. Of course, the Haywood County 911 Communications Center became inundated with frantic callers trying to survive. 911 staff had the world of Haywood County dropped on their shoulders in a moment's notice. These men and women handled over 2,000 emergency calls in a few short hours. <clears throat> Some of these callers, unfortunately, could not be helped immediately, so decisions had to be made. Decisions made such as asking the person in need of help 
to fend for himself or herself and perform strategies such as getting in the attic on top of roofs, moving to higher grounds, and any other means possible. None of these decisions came with any peace of mind. I believe the quick reactions by the telecommunicators this night saved numerous people from drowning. And again, on May 4th, 2022, we were awarded the Communications Team of the Year during the annual conference from the North Carolina APCO Association of Public Safety. And so at this time, I'm just gonna call each one of them's name out and let them step forward, that way you know who they are. So Shift Sergeant Byron Davis, and then Shift Sergeant Zach Engel, Shift Sergeant John Pullen, and Telecommunicator Autumn Franklin, Telecommunicator Samantha Norris, Telecommunicator Sarah Mahaffey, Telecommunicator Heather Cagle, Telecommunicator Call Brookshire, Telecommunicator Anna Carol Pope, and Telecommunicator Hunter Kilby. And then lastly, I would like to present this award to the Sheriff, to Sheriff Christopher, to be placed in the Communications Center to honor each member of the 911 team. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you don't mind, just uh, look back here at the families that are involved uh, with making sure that this particular group gets up every day and gets to work or gets plenty of rest to, uh, to be able to come in the next day. So I got moms and dads and, and children and uh, all different kinds of people in between. And so I want to say thank you very much to everybody that's involved in this group of people's lives because uh, it takes all of us to, to do this. And I just want to say thank you very much, moms and dads, husbands, uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, wives, uh, whoever else is here. Thank you so much for being here with us and supporting this particular group. Thank you. Thank you all for letting us have this time. Thank you. Sure. And I, I just wanted to uh, say one more thing. Um, we just received word today uh, from North Carolina Gover uh, Governor Roy Cooper has co proclaimed May 15th through May 21, 22 as Emergency Medical Services Week. And the theme for EMS Week 2022 is EMS Rising to the Challenge. Regardless of the hardships faced by EMC agencies, whether it is increased call volume, extended wait time at receiving facilities, shortage of personnel, working at vaccination sites or EMS filling voids in other healthcare disciplines, our EMS department has risen to the challenge. Thank you to every EMS professional for your exceptional service to our community. We tr uh, certainly and sincerely appreciate your long hours and taking time away from your families to provide emergency care to our community. So thank you all. And I know they probably had to get back to work or, or uh, leave, but uh, we, we wanted to also uh, recognize them for that also. Okay, does anybody have any constituent concerns? Yeah, I had a, I had a couple of road issues. I know the foliage is greening up and uh, some people have some line of sight issues. I need to follow up with uh, Brian and we'll get some DOT help on some of that. But also, uh, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park had uh, uh, extended their period to voice their opinion on parking fees. And I think we did send a letter to protest uh, parking fees for county residents that join the parks. I know several counties uh, here in North Carolina and Tennessee had had done that, and I know a lot of our families here have uh, kinfolk buried uh, down on the Smoky Mountains National Park, and they go down there very frequently. So we did we did send a letter, I think. Yeah, I think it's last week. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Got anything, Brandon? I know I had, had a few, but uh, I forgot with Mr. Moorhead and took care of those. And uh, 
I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, uh, an event I was at uh, yesterday. It was a drug awareness event. There was uh, several folks out here on the courthouse lawn and they done their walk. And uh, I think uh, everybody knows that's a huge problem here in our county and in our nation. And uh, it was good to see the support that was here and that showed up. So I appreciate that. And, and just all the folks that we just recognized, you know, I've had the privilege of working with a lot of those folks throughout my short uh, law enforcement career. Uh, hadn't had to use them a lot uh, by calling them for help, thank goodness. But, uh, you know, these, these people uh, deal with uh, things such as talking somebody out of suicide to help them deliver a baby. Uh, at times, so uh, my hats are off to all those getting getting that number one slot is is huge. It's big and it's important. I wish we could pay them a whole lot more than we do, but again, my hats off to them and I appreciate them. Yeah, I, I echo what Brandon said. I'm, it's a very impressive award, and um, congratulations for that accomplishment. I don't have any other constituent concern. I didn't have any concerns, but <clears throat> as many of you know, my uh, family are firefighters, and I listen to the radio often, the radio traffic, and I will, and I have actually called in for a situation one time, and they definitely are the calm voice when you need to be, you need somebody to listen to you, and when you hear the radio traffic and how they handle and dispatch all those things, it's a job I cannot do, and so I am on all of those that, that can, so congratulations, it's well deserved. Thank, thank you, everyone. And uh, I, I just uh, echo uh, what Brandon, I, I would like to have made that, and I wasn't able to because of the family obligations, but I um, appreciate uh, all those that were there yesterday for that awareness uh, walk. And then I appreciate the EMS. They've, uh, they're always very professional, and we appreciate all that, they, that they've done. And, you know, I was just wondering how many calls they received, and she said over 2,000 calls, and that was probably in about three or four hours. So that was a pretty... Uh, Pretty stressful time, I'm sure. So we appreciate all the work they do. Okay, next order of business is agency administrative reports and presentations. And we have our physical pre presentation of the fiscal year 2022-2023 manager recommended budget. Brian, appreciate you getting this together for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before we begin, I just want to thank the board for their guidance on working through the budget process, uh, the department heads for their requests and patience as we go through it. Uh, Chris, uh, appreciate him sitting in on the budget reviews this year. I think I can sort of conscripted him into uh, to, to working with Will and I. And then a, a big thanks to Will. He's worked uh, really diligently on, on this budget, uh, helping come up with with lots of reductions, but still pro provide service to the community. And uh, he's put together a really good looking budget book uh, to share with the public. So thanks to him. Uh, we'll just jump in real quickly. Uh, si Simmons has something on the regular agenda and doesn't want to listen too much about the budget tonight. So, uh, Property tax is our largest revenue. Uh, for this year, we're actually anticipating a, a total valuation of $9.7 billion here in the county. Uh, the amount, $52.1 million, you see on this graph represents not just current year, but prior year taxes as well. And this is, represents an increase of $3.68 million. Uh, when you, you actually uh, break down the property tax, uh, we have about $44.1 million in uh, real estate, real property taxes. Uh, we have a, s a smaller amount for motor vehicle and personal and then corporate. One of the big changes this year, and uh, thanks to, to Greg West and his staff, we've increased our collection rate. For current year, we had 97.39. Uh, next year, our collection rate is projected at 98.16, an increase of 0.77 percent. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that actually yields about six hundred ninety thousand dollars new money just from getting our collection rate up. So that that's huge for the county. Uh, we also had new growth uh, based on new construction, renovations, things like that. We've got about eight hundred thousand dollars in uh, new property taxes. 
Uh, we have motor vehicle tax. Uh, last year we talked about the values dropping. Uh, as you probably know, car values are going up. So we have about 247,000 more in uh, vehicle tax. Personal property is an increase of 51,000 and corporate uh, about a $19,400 increase on taxes. Uh, please interrupt as we go through this. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Sales tax is also one of our uh, largest revenue sources. Uh, we have an increase of $3.08 million for next year. Keep in mind, we don't keep all of that. We share some of it with the school system, and uh, the community college has Article 46 that is theirs. If you look at the county share, uh, we're up about $1.98 million. Part of that is we have growth in the ta in sales tax, but also fiscal year 22, we had a very conservative approach. Uh, we've not seen growth in sales tax that we've seen the last two years, so we're really cautious on that. For next year, we have an increase of 3.75%. That's suggested by the North Carolina League of Municipalities. We're following their lead. Hopefully we outperform that. Questions on sales tax? I'm going to tell you, the school system's increase is about $613,000, and HCC expected to get about $494,000 more in sales tax. So it's, it's, it's trending fantastic. Other taxes and licenses, uh, this basically is an increase of $293,000. A register of deeds and, and the TDA, Tourism Development Authority, make up most of that. A register of deed tax is up 275000 and TDA is estimated to be up $100,000. Both of those are fairly conservative estimates. Uh, we're expecting no increase or no change whatsoever in, in the PILT payment in lieu of taxes and the beer and wine tax. Uh, we're holding steady at 592. Uh, restricted intergovernmental, this is a large increase of almost $921,000. Uh, a lot of what's driving that are fees associated with uh, health and human services. We've got an increase of 318000 in the admin reimbursement account. Foster care state funds, about 95000 An increase of 218000 in dental clinic revenues. Uh, WIC, Women, Infant, and Children's up 29000 AFDC, Aid Family with Dependent Children, up 194 Permits and fees, a uh, slight increase of only 22000 uh, the, the big drivers in this are building permits, concealed carry permits, and plan review. Uh, all of the growth that we have uh, estimated is in building permits. Sales and services, an increase of 291000 uh, Basically, the drivers are two things. EMS fees, as our call volume increases, uh, the revenue is increasing, and inspection fees are up about $42,000. Investment earnings, we're leaving flat. Uh, interest rates are up, so as we have more money to invest, it uh, looks like we should we'd get a little more interest, but right now it, it's not stable, so we're projecting a flat uh, revenue uh, for those. And miscellaneous revenue, it's a slight increase of $12,000. This is a catch-all for things that come in that we aren't uh, really, do, they may not have trends. It may be selling uh, surplus vehicles on Gov deals or things like that. All, all of that money goes into the miscellaneous revenue account. That's sort of the summary for uh, revenues. Anybody have questions on on what's going on there? Okay. Shared with you a couple of weeks ago uh, the expenditure drivers. Not a whole lot's changed, but I will go over those. Uh, we did have uh, 28 total positions, just over a million seven increase. Uh, but at the last meeting, we changed six part-time to three full-time positions for animal services, so they are not on the graph. But you can see we had 25 other requests, and none of them are approved. There's the workload. There's, there's lots of justification, but right now uh, we were trying to hold the line and, and and meet our fiscal res responsibility. We do have an increase of around 5% for employees, 3% COLA, 2% merit. Uh, so all employees would receive the 3% COLA effective the first full pay period in July 
employees, if this is adopted, should expect to see a 3 percent increase in their checks on uh, July 22nd. Uh, we'll mention that the state changed the retirement rate for employers. It's almost up to 13 percent this year. So we have to pick that up, and that was almost a $400,000 increase from the, the state retirement system. Uh, we do have the money in for the Christmas bonus, longevity, and 401k continue at 3%. The big driver is also the health plan, medical insurance increase from 17.5 to 18.5 per employee. Shared with you uh, at the last meeting what the uh, increases are for active employees. It's an increase of almost a million dollars. Uh, and retiree insurance is, is only up about 63000 So all in all, an increase of 951000 to fund the health plan. You can see the trend. Uh, if you look at, uh, I guess that's fiscal year 19, the trend was much steeper. We switched from Crescent to Aetna, and it's still increasing, but we're well below the national average as far as uh, increases for uh, health care costs. Talked with you a couple times now about spending by condition. These are the top seven from last year. Total about 1.9 million. Uh, about 1.7 million of those are associated with lifestyle changes. So we do have funds in the budget to try to do more disease management. We think that if we can get more people into managed care, we can lower our insurance costs or our health care costs. So, uh, the goal would be to get to 60% of the f folks eligible for managed care to be in the program, and if we were able to hit that, we think we could save about $380,000. Um, operating increases overall, we've got operating down to $1.499 million. Uh, education is about 338000 of that. Um, we fund the uh, funding formula uh, with the schools at 245000 This is the last year of the funding formula, so Dr. Nolte and I have already talked. We expect in, in August or September to sit down and, and try to come up with a, a new three-year funding formula, so we should have something to you in the fall for that. Uh, and for the community college, we have an increase of 93000 Their request was actually about 100000 more. Now, this is a 3% increase. And I talked with Dr. White, she's understanding it, and you'll see we've cut our department's operating requests significantly. And I felt like through the, the, the conversations with the school or the college that, that we couldn't cut ourselves and not ask them to, to not get their full request. Uh, she understands that, and they will try to make it work uh, for this fiscal year. Inmate costs are up 273000 We also have an increase of 248000 for fuel. And foster care costs are up, I think this is the third year in a row, $115,000 estimated for costs related to housing, kids, and foster care. So the schools, we have 3.2 in for the community college. Uh, their capital and debt are both funded from their Article 46, so that's not uh, really on the general fund side, uh, but it does $3.2 million for the community college. The school system, $16.7 million operating 900000 for capital and their debt's a little over $2 million. And like the college, the capital and debt come from sales tax allocations. Any questions? Vehicles. Uh, current year, we, we were hoping to replace 24. We weren't able to. We have three, as we're calling them, the holdover vehicles. Uh, next year, we actually only need 23 vehicles but the bad part is four of them are ambulances. So we, we have an increase of about $764,000 for vehicles next year, uh, and basically EMS and replacement of those ambulances is driving the, the, the cost. We've talked a little bit about uh, the jail project, or a lot about the jail project. We actually have a contract from Mosley. It will be at the board's uh, next meeting on uh, June 6th. I think we ironed out all of the details and we'll bring it back to you guys uh, on June 6th. The loan payments will probably not start until fiscal year 24, and we expect those current market to be a little over $2 million a year. 
Uh, we've also talked about a major renovation or construction of the library. It's somewhere in the eight to $10 million range. We do not have funds in for that project, but that's something that we can talk mid-year about if you would like us to uh, pursue that. We have our financial advisors looking at our debt profile to see if, if layer in that debt will keep us uh, in, in good shape. This is our, our the county's uh, debt profile. This does not include school or college debt since those are paid for by sales tax. Uh, this is our existing debt profile. And this is what will look like with jail expansion. I shared with you the last time some uh, of the rating agencies' metrics. Uh, our current existing debt to assessed ratio is 0.44%. Moody's would classify anything under 0.75% as very strong. And S&P gives a positive adjustment for anything less than 3%. So from existing debt, we're in great shape. Uh, existing debt to expenditures, it's currently 5.88%. S&P considers anything under 8% very strong. And a 10-year payout, meaning how much of your debt's going to be paid off in the next 10 years, 67% of our debt is. S&P gives a positive adjustment for anything greater than 65. So those are the three major matrix that are scored, or metrics that are scored, and we're very strong in all of those. Outlying years mention the jail debt. We know that once we expand the jail, we'll also have some operating increases, staffing increases. Um, we're also fighting what everybody else is as far as wage escalation. Uh, currently, 1% is about $380,000 when you factor in retirement and FICA and all of those things. And that ties pretty close to that managed care number. So if we can save some money on managed care, that covers almost 1% yearly so that that would really help uh, service demands we we talked about the new positions that were requested haven't been able to fill those uh, the school funding formula and then inflation it's we, we have cost increase not just for gas i think travis was telling us a box of latex gloves that had normally been eight dollars we're paying 32 dollars for now so those are the kinds of things that that we face as a county like homeowners do just on a larger scale. So all in all, the general fund is up 6.65 million or 7.37%. The department requests actually came in at a little over 104.7 million. So basically, uh, we've cut 7.8 million from the department request for the budget that's before you tonight. This shows by function the growth in, in the, the, the budget. Uh, public safety is increasing over 4.3 million, or 64% of the total growth. Health and Human Services is increasing 2.16 million, or 32.55% of the total increase. So if you just take Public Safety and Human Services, that's about 97% of the change in the general fund. And that makes sense because a lot of what's driving it is employee costs, and that's where the bulk of our employees are in those two functions. If you look, uh, not just based on function of public safety, human services, and everything, but where the money goes. It's in salaries and benefits, 4.8 million. Operating is that 1.499 I shared with you earlier. Uh, so th that is uh, about 72% of the increase is related to salaries and benefits. It's a product of the full year of the pay and classification study we did. We've got the 2% merit, 3% COLA in for next year. We also added the, the uh, telecommunicators that the sheriff referenced. We've made a change for, I think it was seven paramedics uh, for, the, uh, for EMS. So all of those are helping drive the cost. So we weren't able to do it without using fund balance. Uh, but over the last three years, we've steadily brought down our fund balance we needed to, to balance on July 1. So this year, two years ago, we were at 6.48, and then we dropped to 5.91 million. And uh, for next year, we expect to use 5.36. But uh, in 21, we actually added about $2 million to fund balance. So uh, these are conservative estimates. I can't stake myself out and say that we won't use fund balance, but I'm, I feel really good where our revenue projections are and our expenditures. 
other than the general fund, I need to review with you several other funds that we have. We have the health insurance fund. It's at 12.6 million. It's an increase of 923,000. We have a workers comp fund of 606,000, but it's actually a drop of $100,000 for next year. We've had really good experience this year, so hopefully uh, workers comp claims level off. Separation allowance is for sworn law enforcement officers. No change there, 65,000. Uh, our E911, this funds that we receive from the state, uh, it's a it's a 416,000, but it's a decrease of about 49,000. And solid waste is a little over 5.7 million, but a decrease of 337,000 for next year. Other funds, more funds. Road district fund is 252,000. It's an, a slight increase of $4,500. Uh, no rate increase for any of the road districts. Sanitary district is an increase of of. Uh, 3,117, um, no change in the rate. Fire district fund, I'll get to in just a second. And uh, funds 31 and 33, those are where the school's debt uh, uh, comes from and that's where the sales tax funds go into. We have uh, several new funds and these were created basically because of GASB 84. I think it was at the last meeting that, the, that Christian told you about those changes that are required. So fund 60, is the register of these recording fees, 61,000. Fines and forfeitures, those are actually pass-through funds that go to the school district, those 350,000. And then representative payee, those are funds that we manage on behalf of, of folks that uh, uh, social services handles, and that's 910,000. You could think of both 61 and 62 as pass-through funds. Those are really not, not anything that we, we actively manage. The fire district fund is a little over 5.2 million for next year. It's an increase of 347,000, but only one rate change. Crusoe has asked to go from 10 to 10 and a half cents. That's a review of all of the funds. Uh, public inspection, we actually will have copies in here with uh, the, the clerk. We'll have copies at the library, and of course it will be on the website following this meeting. Lastly, the board may call for a special meeting on Tuesday, May 31st at 5.30 here uh, for the public hearing on the budget. Uh, we can advertise that on May 22nd if you approve, and hopefully the board will consider adoption on June 6th. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. I'll be glad to entertain any questions you may have. Thank you, Brian. No, you've already met with all of us individually, so we've had uh, several hours to, to, to talk to you about what we would like to see. And you've incorporated all that, I, I guess. I, I, I think so, yes, sir. Do I need to, so, the call for a special meeting. We need to do that tonight. No, okay. We're just gonna we're just gonna do it and advertise it on the twenty second. Okay. Okay. Questions at all? Thank you. Okay, if y'all have any questions, we'll have our budget here and we can ask those. I want to look over this. Uh, the manager also gave us a book that really goes more in depth than we can study. I'll be taking home tonight. And okay, the next order of business is, admin, is uh, discussion adjustment to the agenda. And I do need a motion and a second to adjust item seven of the consent agenda. It's uh, for the BUA amount of $215,667, and it needs to reflect uh, $144,968 due to the state lowering the one-time low-income energy assistance program supplement payment and approval for 
Finance Director Christian Owen to make all necessary accounting adjustments to reflect this change. And that was item seven. So basically item seven is going from $215,667 to $140, say $145,000 roughly. Well, $144,968. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Uh, okay. Does anybody have any other uh, adjustment or discussion for the agenda? Okay, next order of business is the consent agenda. Does anybody have any questions on the nine items in the consent agenda? Hearing that, I'll entertain the motion. We approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. You want to post? Okay. That's unanimous. Okay. We'll move on to the regular agenda. And the first item is to request approval of a resolution regarding U.S. Highway 74 turn lane into Clayton Homes. And the county manager, uh, Bright Moorhead, and North Carolina Department of Transportation Deputy Project Manager, Garrett Higdon. Here to talk about that? Okay, come on up. You would just uh, just uh, make sure you speak into the microphone so we can all hear you good. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Garrett Higdon. I'm the deputy project manager for Division 14, Department of Transportation, and uh, have, we have sent in a request for a resolution uh, to implement a safety project in front of Clayton Homes um, on <laughs> US 74. Uh, Currently, the safety issue arose, and uh, Division Engineer Wanda Austin uh, approached me uh, to kind of come up with an idea of how we can improve the safety issue. So as of right now, uh, when Clayton Holmes gets their new uh, fabricated homes, they have to pass, they typically come from the east, they pass Clayton Holmes, make a U-turn, and come back up and then there's guardrail on both sides of their driveway so as of right now they are stopping traffic on 74 i don't know if anybody's run into that issue um, but they're stopping traffic on 74 and backing their homes into their storage facility so what the department is proposing right now directly in front in the median there in front of clayton homes is there is a both a east and a westbound east to westbound and a west to eastbound uh, bulb outs and u-turn lanes there so what the department is intending to do is eliminate the east to west so if you're coming from silva you would turn back and head back towards silva we will eliminate that u-turn and bulb out to allow the extension of the turn lane heading in the east or the westbound direction to allow Clayton Homes to pull their tractor trailers in straight and then be able to turn straight into their facility and no longer have to eliminate um, and no longer have to stop traffic, traffic yeah. on the way in. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, so that is what the DOT is proposing and we will get a, um, on top of that we'll have a signed document with Clayton Homes that they will no longer be stopping traffic to ensure that that we will that, yeah, that a, safety issue is addressed right. that's a busy road uh, mm -hmm. it's a lot busier now than it was you know sometimes when i travel 23 to atlanta the roads going through georgia are very wide because there's no mountains right. and when you get to the mountains 23 becomes very narrow mm -hmm. and uh, and i noticed that you know as i drive back and forth it, it really chokes down and that, it, that section of the road through there is very busy. So uh, I can imagine trying to stop people. You know, they're probably going 60, 70 miles an hour. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And stuff. So that's not, not a good situation. So I appreciate y'all addressing this. So you need our approval? Yeah, I just need our approval. We, we okay. have to have the, the Board of Commissioners approval in order okay. to be able to request funding. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Is there any other business along there that would be affected by taking out that other ball out or so, U-turn? So I've, I've looked into, we, we set a traffic counter out, and we found that the average daily traffic that uses the, the east to westbound turn lane, there's only 14 cars a day that use that, that 
turn lane, and then also uh, there an additional about 2,300 feet up the road. There is another turn lane. So at, by calculations, you're adding less than a minute typically to to run up and turn around at the next one. So approximately from right now between turn lanes um, or U-turn lanes there, you'd be looking at about 6,200 feet, but only an additional 2,300 from what's out there that are existing now. Okay, that's my other question, if there's one close by. So if there's one that close, then, then that's great to hear. So thank you. I have any other questions? What was the traffic count through there? Did you get a, an actual traffic count? I do not have a traffic count on 74. The only thing that I we did was just to see how many people used the actual turn lane. I apologize about that. What it boils down to, this is a safety issue, right? To expedite the, the mobile home turning and yes, yeah. yeah. Other questions or comments? Yeah, entertain we move, uh, approve of item one of the regular agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you so Garrett. much. Okay, our next item is the request approval of a budget amendment for public safety, eighty-four thousand two hundred seventy dollars, to accept and appropriate non-recurring grant funds from the North Carolina Department of Public Safety to the Sheriff's Office to be applied towards the purchase of a 2008 Linco Bearcat G2 armored vehicle. We have our Chief Deputy here tonight. Welcome, Jeff. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, Commissioners. I come for, before you this evening asking for uh, requesting that budget amendment uh, to receive a grant, a one-time grant that was issued by the North Carolina Department of Public Safety to Sheriff's Offices across the state. Uh, our uh, a portion of that totals $84,270 and asking for a, a resolution to accept that. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, Jeff, could you just give a little background for the public as to why the Sheriff's Department needs to purchase this armored vehicle? Well, in looking at this, there's the next, the, actually the next five items, or next four items, a total of five items that we'll be talking about as a culmination of funding, bringing sources together to, to, to purchase this. The reason it's needed is much needed. Uh, numerous times have passed where we've had officer safety issues, we've had victim safety issues, we've had flood-related issues, we've had the opportunity in which we've needed to have protection for our deputies and, uh, and EMS personnel and first responders that we have not been able to utilize. We've had to rely on other counties for their resources at times, uh, well, actually from time to time. Uh, most recently, over the last several years, we've relied on neighboring counties to offer resources that we should as a county be able to offer ourselves that put us, uh, put us in a better place, give us the ability to safely respond to very volatile situations. Uh, 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 numerous different situations, and this would offer that ability to be able to go in uh, without exposing ourselves to, to any more danger than our deputies already exposed themselves to. It's no different than wearing body armor or anything such as that when you're dealing with a dealing with a volatile situation where you may have uh, uh, you may be shot at, you may be threatened. Uh, we want to make sure that we ensure the safety of our deputies so that we can ensure the safety of the citizens of Haywood County. So skipping ahead down to item number 2D, which will ultimately be the approval of the purchase, it is a 2008, so I did a little bit of research on this, and it's quite an impressive vehicle. It is. Um, and I'm assuming that it's, I'm, I'm not questioning that we need it. What my question was really, we farm, and anybody that farms and has equipment knows the older ones are kind of hard to repair and get parts for so will there be any issue with that with it being a 2008 very good question uh, the the company Linco is a worldwide international company that deals in situations such as this from the from military to law enforcement as well too and they have a program for refurbishing vehicles uh, this would be a full build with the exception of and uh, due to sole proprietary ship uh, 
pieces, and there was a sole source letter that was attached to that as well, too, due to some of the some of the product um, materials that are used and so forth, and not to compromise the 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 company, the full refurbish, and that's what it would be a rebuild. Uh, is is sit on a an F550 chassis, and uh, the full uh, from the inside to the outside is a complete rebuild, uh, new engine, new chassis, new tires, new axles. So uh, with that said, they warranty that just as a new build as well too. Uh, with with the uh, and it is not a a used vehicle; it is a refurbished vehicle. Used being, uh, I would say, the standard that uh, that they had not made a lot of improvements to a refurbished would be a complete rebuild as described by the company. Any other questions? Hearing that I'll entertain we have a motion we approve item one. So I mean, I'm sorry, item two. So move. Second. Are those you know in discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, you want to oppose? Okay. Okay, item 2A is to request approval of budget amendment for public safety, $79,587, to appropriate Sheriff's Department drug seizure funds received in current and prior years to be used towards the purchase of the 2008 Lanco Bearcat G2 armored vehicle. So we just need to... Yeah, yes, sir. Requesting okay. that approval for the budget amendment, the $79,587, or are, uh, are forfeited drug seizure funds. Okay, uh, good. Yes, sir. Okay. And asking for the approval to use that. Okay. Any, any discussion? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. We approve item 2A. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Item 2B is to request approval of the budget amendment public safety $5,000 to appropriate current year donations received by the Sheriff's Department to be used towards the purchase of a 2008 Lincoln Bearcat G2 armored vehicle. And that's so you have folks donated five thousand dollars. We, we actually have several, or quite a few benefactors, people that want to see the betterment of the office, and they, they're uh, uh, through their goodness, philanthropy, uh, caring, uh, interest, whatever that is, they uh, they offer those those donations throughout the year to be used for certain things and to be able to supplement what we do have to Great. continue to serve them. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, I'll entertain a motion. We approve item two B. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. That's unanimous. Okay. Item 2C is to request approval of a resolution authorizing the purchase of the 2008 pre-owned Linco Bearcat 2 G, G2 armored vehicle from Linco Armored Vehicles using the sole purpose, using the sole source exception to the competitive bidding process for the Sheriff's Department. Go ahead, Jeff. Yes, once again, it is, uh, is the culmination of these three different for, uh, funding, uh, funding sources to bring together the purchase uh, of, this, uh, of this Bearcat G2 uh, under a resolution. Asking, uh, so they're like the only ones that make it, really? I mean, one of the few people that make it. One, one of the few internationally, that is correct. Right, international. Wow. Any, uh, any questions on that? I'll entertain a motion we approve item 2C. So moved. Second. Second. Favor say aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, then item 2D, which was the final one, <laughs> is to request approval to purchase the uh, 2008 pre-owned Linco Bearcat G2 armored vehicle for the Sheriff's Department in the amount of $179,725 to be paid from drug seizure forfeit funds, which is 79587 grant funding, <coughs> which is 84000 Donations, which is five thousand, in physical year twenty one twenty two, budgeted funds of eleven thousand one thirty eight. So that kind of culminates what all of it is. Yes, sir. It does. To to add to the uh, the the budgeted funds of eleven thousand one hundred thirty eight dollars of currently budgeted for this fiscal year. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion at all? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, so congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, item three is to request approval of a resolution authorizing the purchase of Motorola cameras for body, vehicle, 
an interview room, including the sole source exception to the competitive bidding process for the Sheriff's Department. Okay, Jeff, go ahead. Yes, this evening we, we are asking for approval to purchase the Motorola cameras for body and vehicle and interview room for the Sheriff's Office in the amount of $275,000. $353.50 to be paid for out of capital project fund 45. What this does is it, uh, it continues an already existing program of dash cams and it expands that dash cam program to include all our, our marked vehicles and to include a body cam program and an upgrade to our two interview rooms uh, to a different format that's more compatible with software as recommended by IT. Uh, in, in order to to manage interviews and such with with suspects and victims alike, um, and, and that would uh, that would continue this ongoing program and expand this ongoing program. We got any questions? I entertain a motion to approve item three. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Then item 3A is to request approval to purchase the Motorola cameras for body, vehicle, and interview room for the Sheriff's Department in the amount of $275,353.50 to be paid from the Capital Project Fund 45. So you kind of explain that. Yeah, yes, in explaining that, that is a continuation in, in, uh, in lieu of full transparency as we move ahead. Uh, we want to make sure that we, we document in every way possible through dash cams, body cams, and uh, the activities of our deputies uh, for, for, for many, many reasons. So this will just expand that program. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. We approve item 3A. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? I got one question. Uh, Chief, will this, well, I guess, will each deputy have a body cam in each car? So I assume 100%. That, 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 that is correct. We uh, it, currently we have 27 dash cams that are in in operation right now. This will allow us to uh, to to take that. Uh, we'll purchase eight more to to round that number out as far as the vehicles go. Uh, this will allow us, which we uh, back to the dash cams. We utilize those as a as a piece of equipment that's installed each and every year in the upfit that that is passed through this this board as well too, each and every year. So we just need eight more to bring us up to speed with the existing fleet as it stands. This will also have us purchasing 64 body cameras, which will do exactly uh, what you had said, and it will increase or upgrade the, the interview room capabilities of audio and, and, uh, and uh, uh, camera as well, too, uh, for, for suspects and for victims or for anyone we need to record an interview. That's within, within the office of the sheriff as well. I know we're we're buying some cameras that we've bought in the past. Sounds like, mm -hmm. uh, from a quality standpoint, I guess the quality of these is what we need. Or I, I know what I've learned here, what Joey shared with me earlier from our cameras here. Sometimes spending a little bit more money, you get a whole lot better quality, you know, of a camera. So I assume that these are good quality, and and what you'd like to have, I guess, is what I'm asking. Y yes, and and based upon our existing uh, system that we're currently using. Uh, this is compatible with that. It also upgrades that system as well, too, so that we don't have issues. This includes a cost of cloud storage as well, too, which, which the storage of the cameras on site is something that becomes astronomical over the years. So with cloud storage, that helps us to do that as well, too, and it continues the product that we already use so that we don't have any compatibility issues as far as software or hardware. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think this will really make everything safer because that way... You know, everything's filmed, and you can see what happened, exactly what happened, and then, you know, and that's that's what happened. <laughs> and you can see the tone and hear everybody's voices and everything, so I, I really think Cameras don't lie. Huh? Cameras don't lie. Right? Yeah, yeah. How long do you have to keep that's that evidence or that those recordings? Is there a limitation? It, it depends. In the North Carolina State Archives, um, we, we entered into a resolution as a, as a county and as a board 
there's a schedule, a retention schedule that we have signed into. It depends on what the charges are. It depends on uh, information based upon the district attorney's office and what the set, what what the madam district attorney sets as well too. And depending on what charges, what they are, what they're affected, to everything from homicide, uh, there is no uh, limitation. It could be throughout a lifetime, all the way to. Uh, a normal 30-day uh, or 28-day cycle, depending on what the district attorney wants to set that, that limit at. And we base the retention piece on, on the ske retention schedule from North Carolina State Archives. As we used to say in football, you know, after a game and they play the film and say the big guy in the sky does not lie. <laughs> so you can't tell the coach you didn't do something when he's on film and you see it. So, <laughs> Okay, so... We have a motion and a second. So any other, any other discussion? I, I just w would say uh, after practicing law for 27 years, and I don't do as much criminal work as I used to, but this is, this is something that it protects law enforcement. It protects the, the person that's being arrested. Uh, it reduces time spent in court. I mean, when you're representing a defendant and you show them the film of what happened, uh, the case kind of collapses pretty quick. So um, it, it's, it's very important to have this, and I'm, I'm glad that, that we're doing this as a sheriff's department. I would think that would save the court's money also. Oh, yeah. yeah. Believe me. And, and everybody. <laughs> Time and money. So, okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, you want to pose. That's unanimous. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Jeffy. Okay, number four is the request approval to accept the state capital and infrastructure fund grant in an, an amount not to exceed $77,602 to replace the roof at the Clyde Armory. Approval for the county manager to execute all documentation pertaining to roof replacement and approval of agreement between Southwestern Commission and Haywood County for said grant. And we have our community and economic development director, David Francis, to talk about that. Hey, Dave. Good morning, Commissioner, or good, good evening, Commissioners. Um, first, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Russ Harris with Southwest Commission for letting us know this grant was available, and for Senator uh, Kevin Corbin for allocating uh, this money for uh, uh, our uh, area and county. It was really appreciated. So what this grant will do, we'll be able to replace the roof at the Armory. We received a CDBG grant uh, several years ago, and it's been a slow rollout from the uh, state uh, office about getting those funds available. We were approved in November of 20 for that, but we did not receive the official go-ahead until November of last year that we could proceed. And then we sort of had some dialogue back and forth because due to the lead abatement that, uh, that needs to be done in the uh, facility, uh, we now uh, believe there's some uh, uh, I'm sorry, we would do as more asbestos and, excuse me, not asbestos, but uh, paint abatement there that uh, from the lead paint uh, that uh, needs to be uh, checked as well, too. So we've been having some dialogue about them, about capturing the lead from the shooting range and the lead from the paint as well, too. So it's been a little bit slower rollout. And since that time, the roof has become a little bit more uh, unmanageable and deteriorated to a point that needs to be replaced. And we had put the, the money in the budget for that, but so luckily this grant came along and we were able to access the money for that as well. So we're going to put a new roof and new gutters on that, and we'll only have to access about $15,000 out of our budget for this. So it's a good win for the, the county. Anybody have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yes. <laughs> some of these, you know, good, good to be able to write some of these grants and see them come through. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. We approve item four. So I'll move. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. aye. You want to pose? Okay. Thank unanimous. You. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Item five is to request approval of budget amendment for debt service principal, three million nine hundred and thirty-five thousand and eighty-five dollars to transfer fund balance restricted to schools from the fund balance to fund thirty-one designated for school debt and capital spending. We have our finance director, Christian Owen. How's the baby, oh, Christian? She's good. Is she? <laughs> She's <Yeah>. growing. <laughs> okay. Very good. good. So what we're doing with this is we established Fund 31 and 33 this fiscal year so we could segregate the school and community college spending. So what we're doing is with the $3 million is we are moving the 630-2021 fund balance into there. So it's out of the general fund and the general fund's money is all the general fund and there's not, you know, it's a, 
a truer picture of, of where we stand with fund balance and the school's money is segregated in its own fund. Passing through it, right? Yeah. It just makes reporting a, a lot easier. Okay, good. And, it, and provides a clearer picture for the schools and the community college of how much um, money they have for debt and capital spending. Any questions for Christian? Not only that, but I think it makes it clearer for us, too, when we look at it. We realize what, you know, yes. when I look at it, I see all the money there and yeah. versus what's actually the school. So yes, I think it's not an over, overinflated yeah. fund balance right. for the county. Right. Right. right, exactly. Okay, so entertain a motion. We approve item five. So move. Take it. Any discussion? Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, you want to oppose? Okay, Christian, we'll move on to uh, item six, to request approval of a budget amendment, debt service principal, $4,596,158, to transfer a fund balance restricted to the community college from the general fund to fund 33 designated for the community college debt and capital spending. Christian, this is a similar? Exact same scenario. The $4.5 million is the 630-2021 fund balance that's segregated for the community college. So I'll entertain a motion. We approve item six of the regular agenda. So Thanks. moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Christian. Okay. Our next order of business is appointments, and County Manager Brant Moorhead will uh, we request approval of an appointment of one position to vote for the Haywood Community College Board of Trustees. We interviewed four potential candidates for this position, and they were all very qualified and very, uh, very good candidates. Haywood County is blessed to have so many people that uh, want to apply uh, for these boards. They're, they were all very qualified. While everybody's voting, I would like to reiterate what Mr. Chairman said. It's a, it's a pleasure to sit in some of these interviews. Quality people we had on this this round of, of interviews for this board. It, it is amazing. We're blessed here in Haywood County uh, with folks like that who want to step up. I wish I could put them all on, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. E extremely qualified. No, no doubt about that. You could throw a dart at this one and you'd be fine. Mr. Chairman and members, you've uh, appointed Paul Turner as the uh, new um, appointee to the Haywood County Board of Trustees. Thank you, Frank. Okay, our next order of business is closed session, but we do not have any. And before we adjourn, I just want to announce that there will be a public hearing on Tuesday, May 31st at 5.30 p.m., to receive public input on the proposed budget for fiscal year 2022-2023, and the notice of the public hearing will be advertised in the Mountaineer on May 22nd, 2022. Is there any other business to bring before the board? In a motion that we adjourn. I'll make, make a motion we adjourn. That's supposed to mean. Oh, okay. I don't know if we were supposed to bring this up at the board meeting or not. What is that? I don't know. Somebody <laughs> left this right in front of my. I think it's one of the staff. I don't. I look at y'all's faces. It doesn't look like one of my commissioners playing a prank on me. 
<laughs> I think we need to have a full discussion of this. You want an investigation? Yeah, investigation okay. right now. Do you, can you, do you got any of those body cams? <laughs> <laughs> does the camera, does, does Jeff, does Joey know if the cameras run during all the time here? Cameras don't lie, do <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll find the culprit. We need to find the sheriff. We'll file an investigation with the sheriff's department right now. <laughs> okay, so I had a motion and second, right? I second it. Okay. <laughs> you butted in when we didn't have a discussion, did you? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned, and everybody have a good week. Thank you.